Are you looking for ways to consistently achieve good tension on your quilts? Stick around and we'll show you some great tips. Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. Today we've got Christina Whitney and I'm Kim Sandberg and I'm going to say today we are Chief Tension Officers Love it. at Handy Quilter. <laughs> Tension is super important, isn't it, Christina? It is very important. If you don't have good tension, you are not going to have a good experience. Exactly. And the biggest difference between the domestic machines that I, I'm guessing the majority of quilters have started on is on a domestic machine, what do they tell us about tension? <laughs> don't touch it. Exactly. <laughs> but tensioning these machines, what do we say? You have to do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be brave. Turn the knob. You can do it. Exactly. So Christina, let's, let's walk through the steps of consistently achieving good tension. Okay. So it starts with the foundation, mm -hmm. which we did a video on last month right. on bobbins. So you always, always, always want to tension your bobbin every single time you change it, test it, put it in the machine. Once that bobbin tension is set, all further adjustments are going to be done to your top thread. Mm -hmm. So before you can even do any tension testing, you got to make sure that you have your machine properly threaded. Right. Okay. So we've got a cone of thread here. We're going to come up through the thread mast, the first tension guide, the three hole guide, the next guide, bring it down through the tension disc. And this is probably one of the most important parts of threading mm -hmm. the machine. You've got to make sure that that thread is in between those two discs. So I can even stick my finger in there and pop it open. There's two discs there. It needs to be in there. And I always say floss it up. Mm -hmm. Give it a wedgie. Yep. Okay. Get it up in there. Okay. So once it's between the tension discs, then you need to catch this little spring here. From the spring, it's going to go down through the stirrup, through the take-up lever, next tension guide, the needle guide, and then through the needle. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the machines are set up a little bit differently, so use whatever is in your owner's manual for threading your machine. Mm -hmm. Now, getting it through the needle, this is an important part because if you do not have the correct size needle for the type of thread that you're using, you're going to have some issues. You're going to get a lot of thread shredding, mm -hmm. which is not fun to deal with. Okay, so we're going to pop out this little package of needles here. This is a size 14. Size 14 needle, what thread would we use? Size 14, you know what? Let's pop it over to the other side. Look, there's this nice little chart here that tells you what size needle and then what type of thread works for that particular needle size. But wait, Christina, I thought we chose our needle based on the fabric we're using. No, the needle size is always determined by the thread that you're using in the top. Okay. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. since I did mention that it's matching the thread that's in the top, I do want to mention that the bottom thread, the mm -hmm. bobbin, mm -hmm. can be a different weight thread. It does not have to be the same weight thread as your top thread. But we always do recommend doing the same color. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> if there are any little tension issues mm -hmm. along the way, which happen, it's, that's yeah. life. Um, but if you have the same color thread top and bottom, you're not going to see that as much. Exactly. Okay. So needle size, mm -hmm. make sure the machine's properly threaded in the tension disc, and then you can start tensioning. We're going to show you, first of all, though, a, an example of good tension, yes. what we are looking for. So Kim, are you going to grab that quilt for me? So this is a quilt Christina just finished, which has fabulous tension. <laughs> <laughs> Got very lucky. I did lots of practice on this one. Okay, so if you are looking, I always look at points mm -hmm. and on curves. And when we do some sample testing, you'll see why. But if I look at the, these points, I am seeing a nice definition, meaning like you can see kind of the little dimples of the stitches, mm -hmm. the separate stitches. And I'm not seeing the bobbin thread being pulled up. Right. Okay. And if I look at the back, the same thing. So the goal here is to take the bobbin thread and the top thread mm -hmm. 
and have them loop together inside the sandwich. Exactly. So you're <laughs> going to have this. Here, I'll be the sandwich. Inside the sandwich. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so that is the goal. That is, that is what we're aiming for. Yes. And to get that consistently. Yes. So let's show some situations that may not be ideal. Okay, so this is the top of the quilt. Okay. And you can see, like, just looking at the top. Oh, yeah. There's a couple places where I can see the bobbin thread coming up. Uh -huh. And the bobbin thread is black. You can see that up there on the back. Yep. Okay. So, again, I mentioned look for the like, points mm -hmm. and circles. If I look at this point right here, the points of those stars, you can see some black thread popping up in those corners you there. You sure can. And that's the, that's the bobbin thread showing on the top, right? That is the bobbin thread showing on the top. Now, we've already set our bobbin tension. Mm -hmm. So all the adjustments are going to have to be done to the top thread. Mm -hmm. If the bobbin is coming up to the top, that tells me the top thread is too tight and it's pulling that bobbin to the top. Right. So we want to loosen our tension in order to let it sink down into the batting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another thing to look for when you're testing the tension over here, you can see what we call eyelashing. That's one example. This is not super um, pronounced, but you can see some of this black thread popping up on the bottom there. And that's why you always want to check on the curve because you can see down at the bottom of the curve it's not doing mm -hmm. it, but at the top it sure is. Yeah. So when you're testing tension, do not do straight lines, mm -hmm. just straight lines. You're not going to see any issues. It's on the curves and mm -hmm. at the points that you're going to find the tension issues. Right. Now for me, I personally like to make my top tension too tight. Mm -hmm. so that I see these little points coming up uh -huh. and then I can just relax the tension down just a little bit so it sinks down into the middle and I'm not crawling underneath my machine mm. to try to check the bottom. Smart. Okay. We've shown you some of the issues that you'll see on the top. Mm -hmm. That's the easy part because yes. you can see it. Okay. The problem that most people have is the tension on the bottom where they can't see it. So if we turn this over, this is the bottom Look at this pure loveliness here. <laughs> this section right there, that is like chenille on the back of a quilt, Christina. <laughs> what happened there? What, ha what would cause this? Okay, so I would say 99% of the problem is that my thread was not threaded properly in the tension disc. Oh. Okay, so it's not getting that tension, so all that top thread is coming down to the bottom. Gotcha. And it's just making um, what we call sometimes a rat's nest mm -hmm. or... We learned a new term in a recent video, comments in a recent video. We had a viewer that called this thread fart. So that's our new term now. That's our new term. We had a thread fart here. Exactly, a kind of big one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now let's move over to this section here. It's not quite as pronounced. And if you look right through here, you can see some eyelashing. Mm -hmm. So that's just telling me I've got my tension just super, super loose. I mean, it could be out of the tension desk, but it could also be that the top tension is just so loose that it's sinking down underneath to the bottom of the quilt. Okay. Um, do you see any other fun things here? You've got a spot right here. I think, I think this is one that we run into super commonly. It looks, it looks like your um, stitch line is polka dots. And that's because? That top thread is coming through. Exactly. Yep. But again, if your thread colors are the same, top and bottom, Something like that, you wouldn't ever notice, okay? Sometimes you'll also get thread that's just laying flat. Let's see, this one's kind of flat right here. I do right there too. Yeah. I don't know which one's the best one. Yeah, me neither. We just look. But if that top, um, bottom thread is laying flat, mm -hmm. it's not forming those little dimples, that mm -hmm. good stitch. So that's telling me that that top thread is still just a little tiny bit too loose. So Christina, do you have any tips on how you can check this without having to climb and get down on your knees underneath well, your quilt? If, if you're using a stationary machine, it's very nice because you can just take your stuff and flip, flip it, it over. over. If you're on a frame mounted machine, I've had people do all sorts of fun things. Um, a lot of people will take their phone uh -huh. and put it underneath and take pictures. Oh, that's smart. And then look at their pictures. Okay. Um, sometimes people will go under and like shine a flashlight so that they can see. 
but a lot of times you're just seeing like lights coming through from the top. Yes. It, it's really hard to see. My go-to, now this is just the first step for testing the tension, is what I do the, is called the fingernail test, mm -hmm. where I'll take my fingernail underneath my frame on the bottom, so let's pretend like this is the bottom and it's on there. I'm gonna take my fingernail and I'm gonna scrape it along that stitch line. Mm -hmm. And if I feel bumpies, mm. I know for sure that that top thread's going down too far into the bottom. I need to tighten it up. Okay. But it doesn't tell me if the thread is just laying flat. That's right. Okay. That's right. So that, again, is why I like to tighten it too tight mm -hmm. so I can see it on the top and then just let it relax. Loosen it back. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Um, other ways that you can check. Um, some of the machines, like the Infinity, has a camera underneath mm -hmm. that you can use the camera on. Yeah. So um, you can also climb under your machine and look. <laughs> you can do that. Which? I know, I know some gals have like a low school, a lo low stool that they will sit on. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's ways to get under there and get back up, but yeah, I, a lot of people will take like their phone on a selfie stick mm -hmm. in camera mode and just kind of scroll so they can still see the, the camera mm -hmm. as they're going underneath, but yeah, there's, there's different ways. But. And if you're testing right next to the edge of your quilt, um, Maybe you can just roll it, roll it up a little bit and look. Yeah. Depending on if you can do that or not on that quilt. Yeah. And if you are doing a quilt, it's always a really good idea to take just a square fabric onto the side. And you want to have kind of the same fabric as what your actual quilt is. So you'll have the same backing and batting. And mm -hmm. then you just take a square fabric on the top and do some of the testing right there. That way it is on the edge mm -hmm. and you can flip it over a little bit easier. To just double check it on both sides. Yep. It's a great idea. Okay, should we show them how to test? Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up my bobbin thread. Okay. And you'll notice that my bobbin thread is pink. My top thread is like this neon greenish yellow whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were doing this on a real quilt, I would want, again, to have matching thread colors. Mm -hmm. But for demonstrating tension issues, um, we're gonna go ahead and use different colors. So. I'm just going to mess this up to begin with, hopefully, and we're going to see. I'm just going to start stitching here, and I'm going to do some circles and a star. Okay, and I'm going to grab my threads and get rid of all of that stuff that I twisted up there. Do, 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 do. Okay, I tried to mess up the tension, but I didn't do a very good job. It looks pretty good on the top, but how does it look on the bottom? Well, let's flip it over. I had a little yellow nest there. I didn't hold my thread very mm. well at the beginning. Right. And people will, you'll notice that if you're not holding your top thread and your bottom thread when you do some tie-offs, mm -hmm. um, sometimes that thread will come down and you'll get a little rat's nest. Um, so always make sure that you're holding on. Now, the bottom, I can see some nice Defined stitches there. Yeah. So on the top, though, I don't know if you notice, I'm pulling up some of this pink on this very corner here. You are. But not too much. So let's tighten it some more. Let's yeah. see if we can mess up this tension. I bet we can. We're professionals. Why is after it that all? when I try to mess it up, it wants to play nice? When I don't <laughs> want it messed up, is that life? <laughs> it is. I think it's just okay. the way things are. Oh yeah. There you go. We're getting it now. Yeah, you are. Whee! And I'm just gonna move that away. Okay, let's take a look at this. I'm just gonna get it. Oh my goodness, that is tight. <laughs> so this is an example of when your tension is too tight. We can obviously see that. <laughs> and when when you're comfortable with your machine and you've used it enough, mm -hmm. you can just do a little pull down test right here. Yep. And you can tell if it's too tight or too loose. Okay, yeah. if there's no tension and it's just like pulling down, it's probably not in the thread disc, right? T oh, tension disc. Okay, yeah. so let's look at this one. You can definitely see the pink popping up on those corners. Oh yeah. And a little tiny bit of eyelashing starting, not a ton, but I'm, oh, let's turn it over and see what the back looks like. So 
Oh, wow, you can see that puckering on the back. Yes, we haven't talked about puckering. Mm -hmm. So what do you think causes puckering? Well, it, I'm guessing it's when your top thread is too tight or when one of your threads is a lot tighter than the other, mm -hmm. it might cause the fabric to pucker a little. Yes, yeah, and it's never fun. Mm -mm. And then you get to unpick it. Yes. So my favorite tension issues to unpick are the worst tension where yes. it just kind of falls out after you like break one of the threads. When there's no tension. <laughs> when there's, yeah, there's, there's no tension. Okay, so sometimes the top tension's too tight, the bottom tension is too tight. Um, this also, I've seen it occur when the bobbin size is not correct. Mm -hmm. Or you're having issues with just the, the bobbin not fitting in the case correctly. Right. Okay, um, bad bobbins, mm -hmm. bobbins that are too full, I mean, there's so many different variables. So I, whenever I'm doing tension, I feel like I'm doing a science experiment. <laughs> and I'm listing all of my variables, and then you have to you know, take one variable mm -hmm. out at a time so that you know what to do. OK, so I know that that's too tight. So let's go ahead and adjust it. OK. OK, so one star, one circle, adjust. Mm -hmm. One star, one circle, adjust. And you're going to keep doing that same process until you're happy with the tension. OK. Okay, so the knob right here, or if you're on the infinity, you can do it on your console, but I'm going to lefty Lucy, mm -hmm. and in the bobbin video, we talked about tightening the bobbin case, the little tiny ticks. Mm -hmm. This is going to be big motions. Right. So I don't know if you saw me tightening that earlier. I don't even know how many turns I did. It's like full turns. Yeah. So this one, I'm going to take my thumb at the top, rotate it all the way down. That's a half a turn, a full turn. Okay, I'm going to do a little pull here. Oh, that's still tight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's loosen it one half, one, and another half. So I've loosened it three rotations now. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a little coming loose. out a little bit looser. So let's, let's take a look and see. Actually, let's just make it really loose. Do it. Okay, I think we're good. Now we'll show examples of it too loose. Okay. <laughs> this is making me giggle. That is really loose. You can okay. you can just see that. But look at those beautifully defined stitches. Uh, <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Yeah. Defined if you want them to be 3D. <laughs> And I say, oh goodness, because my hand's on the back. Okay? So if you're on a frame mounted, you're going to fill on the bottom. Yeah. Can, can we hear that? I can hear it from here. See if my microphone will pick it up. I can tell if I flip this over. Oh, wow. wow, look at oh. that. See all that top thread that came to the bottom? So I really loosened it. That's okay. like no tension on the thread, yeah. basically. None. So, okay, if it's too loose, what do I need to do? Tighten it. Okay. Oh, goodness, I've got threads all over the place. Oh, one moment. Oh, here we go. Okay, tighten. Okay, I'm going to just give it a little tug here. Um, I'm feeling a little bit of tension there. Okay. Maybe another half a turn. And this is just to get me started. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple stitches here. Okay. Okay. So the top's looking pretty good. It is. I'm looking at my points. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing any pink showing. I'm looking at the edges and I'm not seeing any pink eyelashing. Mm -hmm. So let's flip it over. Or if you're on your frame mounted, you're going to do the finger test. Okay, look at that. I don't see the top really coming down. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. And again, no eyelashing. I'm seeing good stitches. So if I were doing this, I would tighten it maybe just a tiny bit more, mm -hmm. maybe like a quarter of a turn, okay. and I'd be ready to stitch. Oh, look at that. So tension is not fun. We'll, we'll be honest. We, we have grief with it still. Yes. So the more that you practice with it, mm -hmm. 
the more types of threads that you use yeah. and go back and forth and re really push yourself. I know whenever we're doing training, we use a variety of thread types. Mm -hmm. And we make it so that we have to do like a really fine thread and then a really heavy thread and back and forth. So you are forced to turn this dial because turning that dial is probably the scariest thing for people. Oh, for sure. But you've got to do it. And once you get comfortable with it, that's when you start getting that consistent tension mm -hmm. that makes you proud of the quilting you're doing, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Now. Okay. You've got a little <laughs> gleam in your eye here. <laughs> I just admitted that we still have issues with tension oh, from yeah. time to time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about ways that we can hide tension mm. issues. Okay. So tension issues on the top usually you can see those and catch them right away. Yes. It's the tension issues on the bottom that kind of sneak up on you. Like when you finish the quilt and you take yeah. it off and you're like, oh, there's another thread fart. There's a little mm. spot right there that isn't so great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So things that you can do that will help cover some of that stuff. Minky backing. Oh. Or like a plush backing. Mm -hmm. Those will cover a lot of tension issues. Yes. A very busy backing, mm -hmm. like a busy print backing. That will cover a lot of stuff. Um, I just finished a quilt that has gold thread and it's like a navy blue back. Oh, whoa. And I, I had a couple little glitches there. Ooh. But luckily the print on the back has a bunch of gold in it oh. and it was a br pretty busy print. So you don't see it as much. Nice, So Very nice. Yeah, that helps cover it up. Um, what was another thing that we were talking about? Making sure you use the thread color. They don't have to be exactly the same color, yes. but making sure that they're at least adjacent <laughs> yeah. really, really helps. Now, that being said, I mean, we talked about this yesterday. If you're using a light blue on the top and you want to use a light green on the back, those are two colors that actually they're, I would say they're definitely adjacent and yeah. they would work together. But if you're doing like white on the top and red on the back, mm -hmm. hmm, yeah. Yeah, that's just asking for trouble. Exactly. Because I mean, even though we've got, you know, the top, the batting, or sorry, backing, batting, batting. and the top, and we're trying to get that right in the center, mm -hmm. depending on how you're moving the machine, mm -hmm. at some times it's going to happen. It's going to get pulled to the top a little bit, down to the bottom a little mm -hmm. bit. It's guaranteed that there's going to be instances like that. Exactly. So just to make it easiest to begin with just try to match those thread colors mm -hmm. again the thread type or weight does not have to be the same but the color is what we're looking for yeah. i just so. thought of one other thing <gasps> yes another tip that we often tell people use a thicker batting if you're mm -hmm. a little bit worried about your tension if you use a batting a batting a bat <laughs> If you use batting that has a higher loft, there's more space to make that connection. Mm -hmm. And so you're less likely to have, to see any tension issues. Yep. yep. Yeah. So my challenge, throw on some fabric, yep. get five different kinds of thread, mm -hmm. mess up your tension, fix it, mess it up again, fix it again, and just practice until you feel comfortable. And that's my, my challenge for the day. I love that, Christina. Thank you so much. <laughs> Definitely take advantage of that and sharpen some of those tension skills. We really appreciate you watching. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe and remember to use that hashtag handy quilter, especially if you'd like to have one of your quilts featured at the end of our videos. And have fun quilting. <laughs>